on the chart. I hope you can read it correctly. But uh, on this uh, table, it's important to know the type of substrate you, you want to functionalize. And on this list, you can see uh, from the bottom to the top of this table, you can see substrates that do not react with silane up to uh, silica or quartz, uh, silica-based minerals. Uh, they, they are very good substrates for silanes to react with. So it's important to know it if you want to uh, to, to functionalize, to use silane, uh, silane formulation as a primer on the substrate. It's also very difficult uh, to, to have a chemical reaction between a silane and choke that is used extensively in uh, uh, many sealant formulations. Okay, on this chart, you can see uh, the difference in uh, between reinforcement fibers when they are immersed into a polymer matrix. When those fibers are untreated, there is no real collection, connection with the polymer. And on the contrary, on the right-hand side of, the, of this slide, uh, you can see uh, amino silane treated fiber. And this creates much better links and enable the fiber to transmit its strengths to the composite system. Kind of similar picture, this time with glass beads. You can see that uh, it's easy to figure out that there's a much big, uh, very, very big difference of properties uh, between the two systems when the glass fiber, the glass beads, can transmit the, the strength to the, to the composite material. An example of coupling. Um, <coughs> pardon, sorry. So, uh, current tires nowadays they contain silica as the main filler. Uh, previously, some 20 years ago, uh, tires contained only carbon black. And as you remember, carbon black is completely unreactive with silane. So, it was useless to use a silane in the rubber formulation. Nowadays, the sulfur silane is incorporated and reacted to the rubber matrix. And that means that it can have a very good reaction between the silica that is used as filler. And this will improve the coupling between the two chemical species. In terms of results, you, there's a improved wear resistance, also improved elastic behavior of the tire. And this means lower heat loss and lower fuel consumption as a result. Also nowadays, the, the grip uh, of the tires has been improved, just changing the formulation, introducing silica as the main filler in tires. In fact, uh, tires are still black, but uh, that's, uh, that's just a, a demand from the market. Uh, no one wants to have uh, green or uh, blue tires on their cars. But uh, the carbon black that is used is just a pigment. It's no longer a filler. Let's talk now, now about xylane used as a crosslinker. So to have a xylane to be used, uh, to be reacted with the main polymer, you need uh, in, in non-waterborne systems, it's important to start from dry ingredients. Um, silane should have uh, either the same chemistry of the main polymer. So it, uh, that's what happens if you want to graft the silane by copolymerization. Or the silane needs to be grafted on the polymer after the polymer has been built up. And once the polymer is functionalized by, with a silane, it needs to be protected from moisture as long as the polymer is not shaped to the final object. Because once, uh, once the product uh, is uh, exposed to moisture, it will cross-link and it will not be uh, possible any longer to, uh, to mold or to shape the, 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 the polymer.
an example in the production of XLPE. XLPE means cross-linked polyethylene. So you start from polyethylene granules, you melt them, it can be in an extruder or in a compounder. Uh, it may be, at this step, it may be required to, uh, to dry them or before molding them, it can be required to, to use a, an oven to, to dry those pellets. And you can create reactive sites for the silane to react. And generally, the uh, peroxide is used. You may then introduce a silane in the melt, in the compounder, and typically a vinyl silane is used at, at this stage. It's, it's possible to, to find uh, full packages containing the peroxide, the catal a catalyst if needed, and a silane at different ratios for, for making life easier. And then uh, the product is uh, extruded to the final shape, it can be a pipe, as you can see on the picture, or it can be in wire and cable. It needs to be extruded to, to the final shape, and then it's submitted to water, it can be steam as well, for the completion of cross-linking. And, uh, and once, as I said before, once the, the product is cross-linked, it's no longer possible to melt it down. So in terms of results, we, if we compare the properties, a few properties of uh, regular poly, polyethylene compared to cross-linked polyethylene, in terms of temperature resistance, standard HDPE melts down at 130 degrees, and a cross-linked equivalent can resist to more than 200 degrees for more than 30 minutes. In terms of solvent resistance, uh, a well-known solvent resistance test is the gel content. So you immerse, immerse your polymer into hot xylene. Uh, it can stay there for one night. Regular polyethylene is completely dissolved, whereas uh, cross-linked cross polyethylene uh, can withstand uh, or, uh, more than 80% of the cross-linked polyethylene will not be dissolved, will stay uh, as, as a polymer. In terms of rheological behavior, a polyethylene has a plastic behavior, whereas you can give, a, give it an elastic behavior for once it's, it's cross-linked. And on the downside, reshaping is not possible once the polyethylene is cross-linked, whereas it's uh, cross-linked with PE. And recycling is possible with PE, but uh, not possible with XLPE. The only possibility to recycle cross-linked polyethylene is to grind it and to use it as a filler for other systems. The use of silane as adhesion promoter. So I wanted to have a very visual picture of, uh, of a formulation with a silane adhesion promoter and one without adhesion promoter or without the right adhesion promoter. Uh, that's a typical example used. Uh, it's uh, based on ASTM test. Uh, on this on this picture, it's on concrete substrate. And you can see on the left, uh, the addition promoter is absolutely not efficient in those conditions. Whereas uh, on the right hand side, there's what we call a cohesive failure. Uh, the sealant is torn uh, and part of it remains on the on the substrate, on the concrete. There are some easy tests run on many different substrates. This is uh, exploiting research uh, for a fast selection of silane used as adhesion promoters. We can see the difference uh, on some substrates where the, the failure is cohesive. That means that uh, a significant part of sealant remains on the substrate or fully adhesive, for example, on polypropylene uh, top left or polyethylene. Those are very difficult substrates to adhere to. And some plastics are quite good, uh, at least in those conditions. Uh, polyamide can be, uh, can be good. PVC can be good as well, depending on the, on the formulations.
there, I would like to make a precision of vocabulary concerning what for me is an adhesion promoter compared to a primer. Because uh, I have observed sometimes some, uh, some mix mixing between the two. A primer for me is a special formulation that is applied in a separate step. So you first apply the primer, then you can apply the adhesive or coating formulation. It can be solvent borne or it can be water borne nowadays. Sometimes you may require time for the solvent or for the water to evaporate before the application of the main formulation. That's the drawback of using a water-based formulation because uh, as a primer, because uh, the water generally takes more time to completely dry. The advantage of a primer is, is that it's applied exactly where it's useful. That means at the interface between the substrate and the adhesive. But on the other hand, once the primer has been applied, it's difficult to know if it's been applied or not, because generally it's a very thin formulation. 